Olaf might be the pick up here for me too. I'd love to see the Rel. I think the Rel could do really, really well mm. here. Um, works well with the Samira, but also the ultimate just dragging everyone into the center and setting up really well for the Samira. But um, looks like, I mean, it's going to be one of those two engages, whether it's the owner or the Rel. Very similar, just strong lane phase, sets up well for Samira's passive, and then provides the CC that you need to enable Samira in team fights. Yeah, I do feel a little bit like with Alistair already locked in, it's a bit more difficult for Rel because she can be interrupted by the Pulverize, so I kind of like the Leona coming on through. But regardless, let's look towards the top side with the Jace Ban being the first one of the second ban phase. What do you expect to see in terms of pools being pinched here, then? Well, at least from RNG side, it's probably the Gangplank next. It looks like they're opting in towards a NAR blind pick here, um, or at least setting up for that. Uh, whereas on BLG side, they're much more focused towards the mid lane with Zoe gone, the Orianna gone, maybe the potential for uh, the likes of a Syndra or even a, a Twisted Fate, because there is still the Camille there, which we could end up seeing something like a Camille Twisted Fate combo or something coming in, and then you're working with the likes of the uh, the, the Pantheon as well, but not 100% certain. We'll, oh, sorry, the Camille is actually a mistake. Yeah. Sorry, banned away, but still we could see this kind of fighter in the top lane that could look to be a split push roll. We have seen RNG do love to build compositions that enable this sort of 1-3-1 one, one style. It's going to be the Syndra, though, locked in for crying. I'm amazed at how high priority the Syndra has still maintained to be, despite the win rate, despite its poor performance. Still, uh, one of these picks that many, many teams will lean towards. Over to the side of BLG, then. What are you looking for here, Dags? I actually want the Akali. Okay, we're going to get the Silas, but basically fits the same both for Zika. Zika, we've been saying, is great on these more um, uh, or melee assassins in the mid lane. And the Akali does very well against the Syndra. Same when you look at the Silas. And Zika's Silas is probably his best champion, maybe, beside the Akali. But certainly in their last series against LGD, he looked really, really clean on the Silas. And you've now set up for a very CC orientated composition, very short range composition that will do well in setting up for this Samira. All right, well, we see the Nar. The Jace is banned. The question is, can Xiaohu play Gangplank or will Xiaohu bring out the old classic Nar counter in the Yasuo? I'm just going to say it just in case it does come on through. It's not going to happen. My dreams will be shattered before me. What do you expect? Oh, it is the Twisted Fate! <laughs> Twisted Fate and Syndra in so one I composition. I think it's Syndra top. Is it it has to be, right? You can't send Twisted Fate top, surely. Yeah, I mean, it, you can. It's just not as good because you only have access to the mid lane. Um, but this is, like... Why does he keep doing this? It, like, Shaohu keeps taking these champions that traditionally do really terribly in side lanes and then putting them into side lanes. Like, Orianna and Syndra are both traditionally champions you do not want split pushing the side lane. But because they've got, like, Wei on this Pantheon, you'll have the advantage in the mid lane. You've got Crying as well, who can go towards this Twisted Fate and lend his strength up towards a show in the top lane. They're going to be able to get the, this Syndra into a situation where she can't just be exploited 24-7, but expect RNG now to pretty much abandon that bottom lane. They are not going to touch it. They are all in on protecting Xiao in the top lane, which opens up a window of opportunity for BLG, where they, with this Olaf, with the Samira, with this Fiona, can get dragons, get the ball rolling, and get themselves into a comfortable mid-game position. Because if they just let RNG scale and get the Xiao Hu out of the side lane, they're not going to be in as good a spot. You know, Dagda, we spent a lot of time today telling our audience how intelligently RNG draft, how intelligently they play the game. Then they lock in the Syndra top, and I'm a little bit like, well, I feel like there were more optimal picks here. I don't think this was just about <laughs> intelligence. I think this was more about making sure Xiao Hu's got a bit of comfort for himself with a mid laner. But this is the thing, right? Look at the champions of Xiao Hu's played so far. Nara was gone. You had the Gragas, who doesn't do so hot in towards the likes of the, uh, the Nara. Lucian was taken off the board. Camille was gone. Oriana was gone. The Malphite was still there, but not the time to play Malphite into Nara. Akali was potentially there, but again, doesn't do too hot into the Nara. And Jace was gone. So, like, his champion pool was already stretched. And then you're just taking it even a step further. So he just falls back towards those mid lane picks and... At least here on RNG's side, they have the tools to play around it. My big concern is this bottom lane, though. With them being left 
completely on their own. I'm a bit worried that BLG might just try and pigeonhole down towards his bottom side and really cause discomfort for Gal and me. That'll be the question, is how well can Aiming and Jue do in this bottom side? Because we've talked about Samira lanes in the past, but let's just reiterate uh, for anyone that's not seen much Samira just yet. If you can get ahead, you will dominate a laning phase. It is so easy to just run away with the game if a Samira gets a couple of kills early on. And Gala, before he's level 6, is very susceptible to that. Doesn't have any mobility on the Sire. Even the ultimate isn't mobility. It's just going to give you protection for a short amount of time. So there's a lot of ways for BLG to exploit that, especially if uh, Olaf can get into the lane. Very nice trade to start this mid lane off, though, from Zika. Nice job. Um, we'll set him up pretty well to try and uh, wrestle control of the mid lane for these early scuttles. Um, I want to see how Kryon plays this lane specifically, because obviously you've got the Silas who's able to nick away the Destiny and will be able to join Kryon on his early game adventures. But that only happens once. And I think in this situation, Kryon needs to be more about like not taking the easy teleport top, but actually taking the, the, the layman's walk up there to oh make sure that he God. doesn't have Zika there. Xiaohu is bullying Pew Pew like nothing ever before. That is uh, really, really rough. And this is Xiaohu wanting a bit of revenge for what's been happening in that top lane in the last couple of games. Pew Pew's definitely been getting the best of him. I think maybe this is less just about champion pools and more about Xiaohu saying, look, give me something that I can dominate on. I mean, it is going to work out, especially against Pew Pew, who hasn't like how often do you play against the singer as a top lane mate? like you pretty much never get to and you're not going to expect someone to be able to drop so much damage off of these dark spheres so consistently and Xiao who definitely very proficient with this pick should be able to do a lot with it and now you can see we just said it i want to see crying getting out early making his way on his feet up towards his top side and already we're getting those plays Yep, Xiaohu can now deny a whole bunch of CS for BB. You can see BB currently on two CS. Two. Now three. Um, oh, so we have an all in in this bottom side as well, Ming. Maybe stunned up for a second, but aiming decides not to follow up. Just trying to shove this wave in. Let's get the uh, lane in a bit more of a favorable position, but won't be able to do it for now because the, the new wave has arrived. Look at Meteor, though. Roaming down towards this bot side, he's going to get the scuttle. There is the opportunity, if they want to, as this wave bounces back, to try and make some sort of play, or even get the TP down to go for a teleport play on the bottom side. Now, Crying will have an answer in his own TP, but honestly, I think burning that TP now um, could actually work out pretty well for BLG, as long as no one dies on that play bot side. We'll see if uh, any kind of TP shenanigans do come through. It doesn't look like that's going to be closed. Meteor retreats into his jungle. He's just going to be clearing through these camps. Dagged out. I think we might have uh, a bit of a fight in this bottom side. As Ming goes in. Takes a lot of damage. The Ignite is ticking away. One or two more autos to do it from aiming. One more tick. And Ming walks away somehow. That was by the seat of his pants. But he gets away he with it. He doesn't even flash. He doesn't even flash. Ming is so oh, confident he that he is him. fine. He doesn't <laughs> even flash. That is the most boss move ever. <laughs> Just like, nah, I don't care. I'm going to be fine. I'm outie. Peace. Yep. He knows he's Alistair. He knows he's tanky with that aftershock. But whew, cool as a cucumber from Ming. And uh, now shoving this huge wave under. You can see Meteor showing on the ward just to try and pressure Gala a little bit. Try and deny him some CS, but... It's not going to work out too well for them. Should be able to clear most of this up. And the plate will survive as well. So nobody loses out on that plate gold. Yeah, Wei as well was on this bottom side. Actually tracked Meteor down. Was making sure that if anything funky happened, they would have the support there. Uh, but they're all going to be totally fine. So as this is going on, I just want to keep track of, hey, you know, we want BLG to make early moves. We want BLG to get these early advantages, and specifically in this bottom lane. Now, we have saw Aiming and uh, Jue actually getting some solo pressure, but Meteor hasn't really been playing too heavy around the spot side. Off of his first reset as well, he's back on top, so he's not going towards these early dragons. I need to see Meteor putting more attention on this bottom side of the map, because you're not going to be able to crack open this top side, especially now that Kryon has the Destiny available. Like, he can go and play around Xiaohu so easily. 
Zika currently has Destiny available. Shao Hu's level 6. Ooh. Had that Q landed, I'm pretty sure that's a kill onto Bu Bu, but Bu Bu with a nice hop to dodge away from the damage. Shao Hu zooms, so he has to head back to base, but Ming wants to make a play in this mid lane. Zika's is there. Media. ATR. I don't know if he spotted Ming. He has now, that's for sure. Axe comes on down, and Zika wants to join in the fray. Jumps on in with the stolen ultimate, but can't turn it into anything for now. First Drake is on the map here, Dagdo, and it's an Inferno. The fact they got that Destiny out of Zika, though, is a big win for RNG, because now that unlocks Crying without Zika just holding his hand to whatever lane they go to. So you can see instantly Crying is like, shove, we're going to push. I've got Shao who's returned to the top lane with full mana. We want to use this time to make plays. And Pew Pew, you're playing with, uh, you're playing with fire there, buddy. Well, he's in the river, so technically he's playing with water. Uh, but he's just gonna hey. gonna give the enemy jungler a little bit of a leash. Nice guy, nice guy, BB there, just uh, setting way up for success. There's a scout of the week in the top side. Xiao who hates having mana is the big takeaway that I'm taking from this top side of the map because he has been just like burning oh, no, out his spells ASAP. Here we go. Time for a dive in the top side of the map. Shahu is going to be able to push the wave in. Gold card comes on through. Bubi is about to turn mega though, and this is kind of botched from RNG. In they go. Crying flashes away from the wallet. Bubi ignited, stunned up, jumped on, and taken down. Crying with the first blood of the game. And now RNG can take their reward in this top side. And RNG will trade that for a dragon happily. RNG are more focused on getting Xiaohu head, getting their solo laners in check, and getting these towers down. Because in the later portion, they're just going to opt in towards this split push. They're going to have Cry in his side lane, probably have Weiwei playing a side lane, but maybe even just grouped as four people and protecting Cry. But they want to be making these picks, and the best way to do that is to get the ball rolling in your favor and make sure that you're getting vision and control of these side lanes in your favor. Really nicely done by RNG to speed up the pace of the game a little bit for themselves. Get crying ahead. He's got himself that one kill. Shahu didn't get the assist. Obviously, he was un unable to step underneath the tower. But still extending that lead in the top lane, even without the assist. Look at the CS deficit that Bu is having to fight himself from under here. Shahu will be able to just clear this last minion and maybe get a recall off because he is completely oom um once more. Yeah, and... Especially for Bu Bu, that is hard because you want to be this tanky now in the team fights. And if you don't have Gore Drinker, you don't have Sterics, it's not really going to do too much for you. Now, they do have the opportunity here because Zeke is on the Silas to answer at least for the split push of Crying with this Silas. But it means that Bu Bu needs to be in a decent spot to try and fight as the four. Otherwise, he just becomes another target that uh, RNG can potentially pick off with these teleport <laughs> Aiming knew what was coming there. Way flies across the map. I think Ming kind of gave that one away a little bit. Didn't they go though? And Jway trying to force the fight anyway. Ming tanking the tower. He's not got level six just yet, but Bu Bu is about to turn into Mini Nar. So they can't brute force the play just yet. I'm curious how Bu Bu got there. In but Mega that's what Nar I'm saying is, that why is Bu Bu here? Like, he's just. He's already behind. He was mid, I think, but Zika's kind of pushed him off of that. Now he's losing CS topside. All right, they're going for crying, though. Knockup should be able to... Oh, they don't need the knockup. What am I talking about? <laughs> Zika just <laughs> bops him. Meteor comes in from the side. That's an easy kill onto crying. In the meantime, though, Shao, who's just pushing endless waves underneath this tower with no response whatsoever from BLG. And he's getting plates, he's getting gold, he's got this massive advantage over Bu Bu. So Xiaohu's going to be in a pretty nice spot when we get to these uh, team fights. And certainly when it looks at like wave clear and controlling team fights with the Scatter of the Weeks, Xiaohu's going to be in prime spot. And I'm not convinced BLG have created enough of an advantage on this bottom side. You can see, like, yeah, they got a dragon, you're 10 CS behind a bot lane. They got no real way of answering at right now for this mid-game pressure from RNG. Well, they do have a 10 CS advantage in the jungle, so, you know, silver linings. Yes. Uh, <laughs> we'll see what Meteor can turn that 300 gold into. Uh, BB is in trouble here. He's going to turn Meganar, but I don't think even Meganar can save you now. Then again, that's a lot of HP. Stuns Ming underneath the tower. Way's here as well, though. They are throwing oh, the slow. everything into the top side, but he's got the counter kill. And he even denies the red buff there. 
Xiaohu will get a couple of plates. He gets the kill, but it's at least gone one for one. Oh, God, is in trouble now. Side. Aiming's going to go for the dive here, but here comes Twisted Fate. You can't go for that kind of dive. <laughs> Gromp is going to finish the kill. No, he's stunned and stopped. That's a nice little flash from Gala, though. Once again, Gala is making the aggressive Xyatl his signature move at this point. Yeah, just about managing to clip on towards Amy. Now, the worst timing possible from Amy. You just had Xiaohu kill your top laner. They're totally fine to TP down. And the opportunity for Meteor to trade that aggression top for this turret bot with Rift Herald is now gone. He's quickly running out of time and space to actually get this Herald down in a favorable position. It's definitely uh, becoming increasingly difficult for this bot side. I feel like that was almost aiming thinking... You know, he knows that he's the guy that has to win the game for this team. He knows that the statistics are very much about him right now. And I think maybe feeling like he just had to make a play, had to do something to set his team up. But unfortunately, that was not actually a play that will set his team up. Well, could have the opportunity to set himself up for this dragon. I mean, you got the Immortal Shield Bow already completed, Gore Drinker as well. Like, the two Mythics completed in this game are both on BLG side. So maybe they can look to try and force this at the dragon, but it looks like RNG have read this and they're just not interested. They're like, right, we got the Zaya. She's going to need time to scale. We already can try and make these plays up towards oh. top side, but Zika's beating speaking them to that, Yeah, speaking of making plays towards top side, it's BLG moving up but way. Not to let Xiaohu fight alone here. Moves up himself. The stuns are there. Zika forced to flash away from the fray. Bu Bu. Trying to get this fight going, but he's not that tanky. Still in mini nar form. And it will just be negated in the end. Nice play from Wei to keep his top laner alive. Yeah, needed to be done. Especially uh, Yu Bu not actually in a position to fight. So in a 2v1, he's great. A 2v2, <laughs> not so hot. So they decide to back away from that. Although Yu Bu still wanting more. Oh, the flash forwards from Yu Bu. He wants a solo kill for himself. Don't know if it quite has the damage. We'll need a boulder or a boomerang will do the trick. Three games, three solo kills from Bu Bu. And we had just highlighted Xiaohu today, saying, hey, this guy's looking good. He's looking like an actual top laner, probably one of the better ones in the LPL. And Bu Bu's gone, hold my beer. Now he needs someone to hold his hand. Yeah, he's gone a little bit too deep for this one. And uh, just as we, every time we compliment anyone in the LPL, yeah. they immediately just yeah. run it down. I swear to God, there's some yeah. kind of conspiracy going on. Bibu unfortunately, and bites off more than he can chew. And that's why I always abuse you, Munchables, because I'm just trying to make sure that nothing bad is actually going to happen to you. Because the second I compliment you, look what happens. This is it. We can't do it. That's true. People die yeah. when we compliment them, so we can't ever say anything <laughs> nice to each other ever again. Um, although I will say, they die in video games, and I'm not currently in a video game. These guys are, though, and they want to turn it into more. Wait, tries to recall. I'm not sure about that one. Gee, his Bu Bu pops away. He's going to be stuck in mini now, so if any damage can land, it will kill him, but it doesn't matter because he's got backup from the rest of his team. RNG have stayed way too long for the tower and get taken down. And now we're starting to see BLG getting answers for the pressure from RNG. Getting kills back over towards the jungler and towards Cry will give them a bit of leeway here for Bu Bu, get some gold back in his favor and actually make him, well, relevant again in this game. Need to keep an eye though on if BLG are gonna be able to turn these dragons they picked up into advantages because now the opportunity is for Cry to piece himself off towards this top side get Xiaohu actually to essentially take the role of mid laner and now start to look a little bit more scary with the double globals that are on their comp. Yeah, we need to see RNG pushing the tempo a little bit and trying to find themselves more advantages off the back of these couple of plays. But ultimately, when you look at the gold, this is very similar to what we saw in game number two. At the 15 minute mark, we saw BLG being just ever so slightly ahead in gold. This time around, it's RNG with a minor lead, but it is that very minor. As uh, we just see the replay of it. Bu flash it onto Xiaohu. Just a bit disrespectful from Xiaohu. And this was uh, really the play to watch out for is Bu doing such a good job to TP in and, and set up Meteor. Not quite able to get that TP into a kill. Um, I was kind of surprised to see the backs come through. I don't think they realized that the TP was there in the bush. Maybe we caught window shopping a little bit. 
Either way, uh, BLG do a nice job. Now Meteor getting in and starting to steal away some of these uh, camps as well. And definitely with the style of jungling that Wei's gone this game. You can see there, pretty sizably behind when it comes towards CS. It has been trying to rely more on getting gold and experience from the lane kills. But since he hasn't been able to get a huge amount of them, Wei's pretty far behind in comparison to Meteor. Yeah, but he has had some turret plate gold. I think that's one thing to, to factor in there. We just saw the gold come up on the left, and they are fairly close in gold, just a couple of hundred difference right now. So the turret plate certainly covering up some of the weakness when it comes to the CS numbers and, and the lack of kills there. Um, see me around the mid lane here. They'd love to start a fight. Ocean Drake is going to be up in 40 seconds, and an Ocean Soul, that's one that's worth fighting for. There's no pressure on the map for RNG though, so Kryon, he needs to come in group, which means BLG can enact a team fight, which is where their team is strongest. They're actually catching Xiaohu. Oh no, Xiaohu's been caught again, has to flash away, gets reinforcements from Kryon. In goes Wei to try and save his team. Aegis Salt does a lot, there's a triple pulverize, but it's not enough, there's no follow-up, there's no damage. Gala wasn't there just yet. Now BLG try and collapse for more, but Gala is here now. The Blade Caller could be huge if he can just survive for now, but Zeke has got a stopwatch and he keeps himself safe. Aiming can dive on in, spin around with the Inferno Trigger and set RNG ablaze. BLG are all so low. If RNG had been there when that fight kicked off, maybe they could have turned that around. But as you rightly said, Gala not in a position to follow up. BLG pick up that team fight. They pick up the dragon as well. And you were looking down the barrel of Soul Point and a potential upset here for BLG over RNG. And just remember, RNG so far not lost a singular series this split. They are five and zero on the scoreboard. They are 10 and two in individual games. BLG have already given them one extra loss in this series. This would be monumentous for BLG if they can win this game out. Yeah, and a big mistake here from Chef. Like, he is not on a strong, like, well, tank at all. You end up getting caught out there. You see, Kryon has to TP in. Gala was still in mid lane, assuming that they were all going to come through the other entrance in towards River. And by the time he gets there, well, this team fight's already done. And no matter how much damage he's put down and how close they are to killing members of BLG, that's the real crux of the problem. Xiaohu needs to be a little cautious. And one of the consistent factors in this game, Dag, that has been that, as you said before the game started, Xiaohu, when he's playing these, these side laners that don't actually want to side lane, like a Syndra, like an Orianna, you're very susceptible to getting caught out. We've seen that a couple of times now across this series where Pew Pew is a very experienced top laner, a very strong top laner. And he's more than happy to abuse the fact that Xiaohu maybe will miss position sometimes and maybe will overextend in this longer lane. Xiaohu's used to a very short lane there in the mid lane. bb has been caught though. Stun comes out. He's going to be able to hop away. It's fine. Yeah, I mean, RNG, though, again, committing huge amounts of resources towards him. I mean, look at all four members, apart from Cryon, are grouped on this bottom side because they're trying to make sure they can be there to support Xiaohu. And when they're not quite able to get this spit push up and rolling, you can see the issues now. Zika, he's the one with tempo advantage top. They've not got the control of that bottom lane. And it opens up Meteor to get deep vision, start to look for the next bar or for Baron, getting slow control and over this next dragon as well. And if Ocean Soul goes across, you're kind of out the window here for RNG's composition. It's really difficult to start picking people off in the manner that you want with the amount of healing and shielding that comes in and even just tankiness that is on this BLG side. Imagine being lunching and watching this kind of gameplay from RNG, knowing that back in <laughs> back in 2019 you were there and you were this weak side top laner for RNG that was basically ignored at all situations, and then you leave RNG and just over a year later, this entire comp this entire team is just like basically Xiaohu and his servants that are all just wherever Xiaohu needs to be everyone moves to that side of the map to make sure he's safe it's like the total opposite of what they did for like Shig, the poor guy especially when uh, he was Xiao Al before on Sunin and he was actually like a strong carry top laner and they they had um 
Hacker playing up towards him quite a lot on Sunni as well. He looked damn good, and then he came to RNG and was like, you're weak side now. And it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> you're extremely weak side, I think is a better phrase there. Is Bew Bew. <laughs> He's uh, inheriting some of Xiao Hu's traits from this series and overextending on the top side of the map. This is one of the beauties of these global compositions. You see Wei and Crime flying in from wherever they need to be and this managing to punish. is massive, though. The fact that you've now, as RNG, got back control of this map with a minute and a half until this next dragon, they can get the vision control, look at where the waves are positioned. They now can make these plays happen. The TP comes in from Zika, but RNG are not afraid of this tower right now. Zika's in trouble, Ming. Using that unbreakable will to keep that front line alive right now. Meteor would love to buy the way in, but the Scat of the Week is going to quell that chance as Gala sidesteps from the Chain Lash. And RNG, they get away with that one. They get themselves a tower, they get themselves a TP out of their opponent as well. But it's a minute, Dagda, until this Ocean Drake. This Drake is everything. As Meteor stunned up. Don't quite turn it into anything for now. Dagda, set me up for this team fight. What do I need to keep my eyes on? Definitely Bu Bu. He's trying to push in this top lane right now. No real TP word from so RNG are looking for a pick. You know, on towards aiming, but Crank can't quite get in range. Zika has the unbreakable will, so he'll be tanky in a team fight. Can play a sort of pseudo frontline role. Meteor wants to charge in. All ultimates available except. For Ming, Blade Caller comes on through in a second here as Wei's gone onto the back line alongside Zika. RNG trying to kite back for now, just trying to keep their carries alive. But Cryon forced to flash on the back side of the fight. Wei burnt down as well. A BLG are winning this fight handedly. Gala has to do everything, but there is Bu Bu. You said to watch him, and the Nar is huge. That was beautiful from BLG. They're going in aggressive. They're pulling all these big ultimates out of RNG. The uh, Feather Storm. You're getting the flashes out from crying. They're trying to push them and poke them, push them into these chokes. And eventually, Bu Bu, with that flash, gets the massive Nar ultimate to seal the deal for RNG. The Ocean Soul goes across. The Baron is going to go across as well. And they might have just delivered RNG their first loss with that play. This could be absolutely huge for BLG across this season. And not to mention that this would be the first time RNG lose a series this season. It would also be a huge statement for BLG showing that this is not just some middle of the table team that you can forget about. This is a serious contender if they can finish this game out. Keep your eyes on Bu Bu here because it's all later in the fight. It's just perfect. Yeah, this was gorgeous beginning with Gala, avoiding so, so much, but they're just running down RNG, and in theory, they can try and, like, toss out some stuns, slow them down, but when you're looking at, like, Olaf, who's consistently throwing out these, uh, these undertoes, you're going to have the dashes that are coming in from Zika, from uh, Jue, and also then as well, Bu Bu tossing out these boomerangs. It's so hard for you to escape. Stridebreaker as well on Bu Bu means he's got even more gap closers, so... In that situation, RNG have got nowhere to go. And eventually, Bu Bu does close the distance and again closes out RNG in that team fight. And I love the build that we're getting to see out from Zika here on the Silas as well with the Leandries, with the Nawa Magis as well. Because he can just steal away this unbreakable will for the team fights. And basically, there is no negatives to having the Unbreakable Will. You're just completely tanky while still damage, while still doing a ton of damage with this kit, with this Leandries especially. And you can't die, so the Magi's makes sense. Like, this is brilliant for Silas. And it looks like he's going towards that Demonic Embrace as well as that next item, like going pretty much for this full split push roll where it becomes very difficult to do you because you were so tanky, you've got a ton of burn damage, and then you've got the, the lifesteal and the healing coming up pretty repeatedly. So nice job from Zika here. Gets on to Wei. Wei using the Aegis Assault to keep himself alive when they the tower there, but BLG, they get to just siege up as much as they want here. They've got the Baron in their pocket so they can keep this going all day long. Three and a half minutes, Dagda, until an Infernal Drake spawns on the map. And it doesn't feel like BLG will be able to end the game before that happens. That could be the last ditch attempt for RNG to keep themselves in this game. It's so difficult as RNG to fight for that Elder Soul. Oh, hang on. 
Xiaohu getting dived. Great CC chain. And Xiaohu does not get to play League of Legends today. In fact, maybe the whole of RNG don't. Because in they go with the Inferno trigger. Trying to finish him off. Crying with the Zonjas. Keeps himself alive for a second. But goes down. Gala. Blade caller through the team. But Meteor is happy to tank it up. Aiming gets himself a triple. And turns it into four. Might as well be playing Jin. As he wins out the game for BLG. And now, as you said, they can just close this out. Baron is still there. The TPs are coming into this mid lane with 30 second death timers. It looks like BLG have done it. Beautiful stuff from BLG. Bu Bu looking exceptional. Zika as well on this Silas. But it was Dwe that started that fight off. The guy on his 23rd day as a professional player sets up the fight that brings down RNG and gives them their first loss of the end.